accelerated algebra two stir pair. So we're gonna add, this is six i. Uh, we're gonna start factoring when we have um, a value that is larger than uh, two for an exponent. So this first one's gonna factor to x squared minus nine and x squared plus nine. And we know that there is not a uh, way to factor uh, sum of two squares, but difference of two squares, we can factor to x plus three and x minus three. And then that gives me x squared plus nine as well. So here is my answer completely factored out. The next problem, uh, which you should look on this problem, is I can factor an x squared out of everything first. And then go ahead and factor this. So that's going to be x minus 8 and x plus 2. So this entire thing. So a lot of times students forget it to have a greatest common factor that uh, they pull out. Okay, we've also factored this. This is kind of like grouping. So when we take a look at these, I can factor that out first. And then what do I have left? Well, I have 5 plus x. Now, I know some people might question saying, hey, could I have x plus 5 as well? And, and the answer is yes, as long as the um, signs are in the right spot. So that would be more of the comfortable answer. I would accept the above answer as well. Next problem, I can factor out an x minus 2 from both of my terms, and then I'm left with 3x minus 4. Okay, so now let's try and factor these. So I'm going to get x squared plus 9 and x squared minus 2. Uh, I can't factor that out because 2 is not a perfect square. So this is our answer just like that. Notice we have squared terms in there. And I remember, again, I can't factor out x squared plus 9 because that's the sum of two squares. It won't break down. Next problem, uh, looks like I could factor a 2 out first. Oh, I take that back. I misspoke. I apologize. So it looks like I have a 2x squared and a 2x squared as my first terms. And then uh, I believe I could do, let's see, what two factors are going to work? I think I could maybe do a... I don't think 9 and 2 are going to work because I'd have, let's see, let's see, if that were multiplied together, that's going to give me negative 36, factors of negative 36 are 9 and 4, uh, 3 and 12, 3 and 12 look like they'll work, 3 and 12, so it looks like I'm going to have a Oh, you know what? I made a mistake. That has to be a 1x squared. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm messing up all along. All right, so then the two factors that are work are the 3 and the 12. Let's see. Could I do a... What if I did a minus 9 and a plus 2? Let's see. Is that going to work for us? So I get 2x squared, 2x there. Nope, that's not going to work for us. Okay. So what I'm going to do, being I'm stuck on this, is I'm going to think about this one. And I'm not going to deal, I think, the raising to the fourth power. So I'm going to factor this. So I'm going to do it by my grouping method. Uh, that's negative 36. And again, I think the 3 and 12 are going to work nicely. So I get uh, 2x squared plus 12x minus 3x, minus 18. And then I'm going to factor out a 2x on those. So it gives me x plus 6. And I'm going to factor out a negative 3 there. And that's x plus 6. So then my overall answer is going to become x plus 6. But because this was to the fourth, I'm going to make it x squared plus 6. And, x, and uh, 2x squared minus 3. So I'll, remember I just kind of replaced this back in because it originally started as x to the fourth. All right, next problem. It looks like I could factor 5 out of everything first. So I get x to the fourth minus 10x squared. 
and then uh, was that plus 16 so then I can factor this I'm going to do these squares I, I see this one pretty easily minus 8 x squared minus 2 that totally works there's no further I can go because those are not the difference of two squares and then this one this is one of our that's a perfect square that's a perfect square so I think and then I have a negative there so I'm going to keep that into account so I think this is going to be 4x squared minus 3 and 4x squared minus 3 I think you can keep that as an answer, or you can fact or make that 4x squared quantity or 4x squared minus 3 quantity squared. So I think either of these answers is fine. We'd be leading more to this answer when we start dividing these, but we can get there later. Okay, remember you must factor out common factors. Okay, so it looks like on this one I can factor out a 4x squared from everything. And that's going to leave me a, what's that going to leave me? That's going to be a 3x to the third minus 4x squared plus 2. And so then we have to ask ourselves, can we, can this problem go any further? And I don't think it really can. I mean, we can try. So let's just try this off to the side. So I know I have this. What if I had 3x squared and x could I somehow make that work where I would get the negative 4x squared uh, nope this would not work so this is our answer and all we had was the greatest common factor all right so look for x to the fourth leading term and x squared is the middle term then factor like you do trinomials okay so that's what we're doing so we got x squared and x squared and I'm going to have minus 9 here, and I think that'll be plus 4 there. That won't factor, but this will. So that's going to give me x plus 3, x minus 3, and then it's going to give me x squared plus 4. And again, where we get hiccups on this is a lot of students want to factor x squared minus 4 as the difference of two squares. And it's the sum of two squares, and we don't have that answer. Uh, these are perfect squares, so I think this is going to become 4x squared plus 1 and 4x squared plus 1. Um, again, I would like you to eventually get to this point, but if you keep the above, you know, those are going to be fine. Uh, what can we do to factor this? Okay, so with this one, we're going to do it as parts. So I can, I can factor an x squared out of that, and that leaves me x plus 3. And I'm going to factor out a positive 6. That doesn't change any signs. x plus 3. Those are the exact same. What do you have left? I have x squared plus 6. I think that answer is fine. Some people say, oh, we should have the higher exponent first. I don't know if it's necessarily really important. But both of those answers, I think, are very, very much the same. So when you have four terms, sometimes you look at it and say, okay, can I do it as grouping? Can I factor an x squared out? And it leaves me x minus 2. Can I factor a negative 9 out? And that gives me x minus 2. That leaves me x squared minus 9 and x minus 2. Double check, do I have a difference of two squares? Yeah, I do. That'll factor to x plus 3 and x minus 3. And then I still have the x minus 2 with it. Okay, again, let's take a look. I'm going to factor out a 4x squared. That leaves me x plus 4. There's nothing to factor out here, so I'm going to leave it as a 1. And I wind up with x plus 4 over or times 4x squared plus 1. Those are the second part is the sum of two squares, so it will not factor. Watch out for the negative signs. So on this one, all I'm going to do is I'm going to factor out x squared, and that's going to give me 2x minus 3. Make sure that negative sign is taken out. That leaves me 2x. This sign changes because I factor out a negative. Then I'm left with 2x minus 3 and x squared minus 5. Nothing factors out beyond that. All right, just so to summarize, always check for common factors. Look for patterns. If three terms and x squared and x... The x for the fourth x to the second constant term, try factoring the trinomial. 
if there's four terms, try a factor by grouping. And you can always see, check, check if it'll factor again, so make sure you don't have difference of two squares. All right, these ones, they want us to actually find the real number solution here. Okay, there's an equal sign, so I'm going to bring this, the 12 over by subtracting it. Then this becomes equal to 0. I can factor out an x squared, and that leaves me x plus 3. Remember, I have a negative there, so I'm going to factor a negative 4. So that's going to give me x plus 3. So that's going to give me x plus 3 x squared minus 4 equals 0. You technically should factor it all the way down. So you get x plus 3. x squared minus 4 is x plus 2, x minus 2. And it's equal to 0. So those each equal to 0. So I wind up with x equals negative 3, x equals negative 2, and x equals positive 2. Okay, we have our four terms, so let's factor out a 4x squared, and that leaves me x minus 5. I'm going to factor out a negative 1, change the signs. So I wind up with x minus 5, and uh, 4x squared minus 1. 4x squared minus 1 does indeed factor because it's the difference of two squares. And remember, it's equal to 0, so we're going to set each of these equal to 0, so that gets me 5. This is going to get me, subtract 1, divide by 2, so that's going to be negative half. This next one is going to be add 1, divide by 2, so I get x equals 1 half. There's my three solutions. Okay, uh, take a look at the homework, and why don't you just do the odds on the homework. And I guess that would be uh, letter 6i is the worksheet. Have a great day, everybody. Take care of one another. Bye-bye.